Welcome back to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. Kindly subscribe to our channel if you're watching for the first time. And please click the notification bell. You can also like this particular video to help it reach a wider range. And please share our videos. To all our supporters, I want to say thank you very much. Or I would like to say thank you very much. The ODM Secretary General, Edwin Sifuna, has locked horns with the Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa as far as the Finance Act 2023 is concerned. After some few days in Colombia trying to market our coffee, the Deputy President is back in the country and when the Deputy is around, you would feel his presence. He came back with a big bang because while he was away, together with his boss, the energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority increased the prices of fuel products to a level that has never been witnessed in the history of Kenya. It didn't end there. Their cabinet secretaries that were left behind in their absence told Kenyans not to bother with asking why fuel products are soaring higher. At some point, Moses Kuria told Kenyans to go and uh, dig boreholes or that, that contain oil so that they stop bothering people. They were never polite about the, 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 the increase of uh, the, the, the fuel and, 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 and petroleum products. And so Kenyans really felt devastated to an extent that some of them over the weekend found it very rough with the people. One person who has been very vocal and thought that Kenyans are gullible and can easily be hoodwinked is uh, Bonnie Hanwali, the Kakamega senator. In three occasions, he has been chased away trying to defend the high cost of living and why fuel prices were increased. And then, the former Nandi member of parliament yesterday took the battle to Ruto's doorstep in one of the funerals where he told off William Ruto together with the members or the leaders, UDA leaders, that they have uh, ditched and abandoned and shortchanged the hustlers who, during the campaigns, they promised they would support. In fact, William Ruto, in a video that is going viral, really lamented that Uhuru Kenyatta was increasing taxes day and night. And he said that was really, really very injurious to the country, uh, country's economy, and to the hustlers and he told them that when he forms a government it will be a government that looks at the plight of the common man so when Rigidi Gashagwa came back I think with the intelligence because in the absence of the president Rigidi Gashagwa was you know briefed of what is happening the economic strategies the intelligence and of course they were following from abroad and when he was coming the first thing that they agreed with William Ruto to do is to try and turn the rhetorics. And how do you do it? He uh, delivered a note in the tweet, a long note, saying there that, Good afternoon, I am home, I am happy to be back after a fruitful official visit to Colombia. As the saying goes, east or west, home is the best. That was the opening remarks. And in that remark, he appeared to be uh, chiding or rather criticizing what Moses Kuria and Ndi had uh, the sentiments of, of, of Ndi and uh, Moses Kuria because he, was, he appeared to, 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 to be a very apologetic that it was wrong for the leaders during such difficult moments to talk as if they look down on the electorates. And this is exactly what he said. I'm look, looking at just the last paragraph. And in his tweet, in his last paragraph, he said, With deep respect, I would like to plead with the people of Kenya to appreciate that the issue of fuel prices is a worldwide challenge. Things will get better as we move along. The government remains aware of and is sensitive to the challenges Kenyans are facing today. The arrogant sentiments by a few leaders do not in any way reflect the official government position or that of the president of President William Samoy Ruto. And he pens off by saying, 
The president remains committed to finding lasting and uh, sustainable solutions to the economic challenges that face our great nation. God bless Kenya. Those statements did not go down well with the Secretary General. And of course, of course, many of you who read, if you look at the comments, they really told the Deputy President, of they told of the Deputy President. So Sifuna rebuttaled, and uh, this is what Sifuna, this is the message that Sifuna had to the Deputy President, that maybe you sit this one out. There is literally no one in the regime that comes close to you in terms of contact for the people of Kenya. You of the shareholders' fame, no, sir, sit down. You make Moses Curia and D sound like page boys in comparison. They are, at best, your students. And when I look at the statement, I've just singled out, but very many Kenyans rebutted on the DP's, you know, statements. And they find the statements fallacious. There's a lot of fallacy in them. Because for the very first time, I have seen the deputy president appear as if he's apologetic, he's remorseful to Kenyans. But if you scrutinize further, you'll simply realize that these are political gimmicks. Because if there is one person, if we were to rank the, the top three or top five most arrogant politicians in Kenya today, regardless of their party affiliation, just pick ANC, ODM, UDA, all of them. Many of you will agree that the number one on the list will be Deputy President Rigadi Shagwa. Maybe followed by Ndindi Nyoro and Moses Kure would even share, or Moses Kure would, would come at number two, then Ndindi Nyoro, Kimani Chunga, all those. All of them, the top five will be taken by members of parliament from the UDA. And so when Rigadi Shagwa wants to come out as if it is, uh, it is D, who is the economic ad advisor, chief economic advisor to the Ruto regime and Moses Kuria, as if they are doing something that is so unique, uh, it's, it's never an isolated case. We have seen Rigadi Shagwa on many questions say that this government belongs to Kenya Kwanzaa. I've always called it the Kenya Kwanzaa Limited Company. And he, he doesn't mince his words and he defends it that... There was a time for planting, and that was when people were voting. So if you didn't vote for the UDA regime, then you are a non-shareholder. He's always said that even if you confront him today, he will defend that. So, in the, and then when this bill was being, they were popularizing this bill, and the, the Zimi fraternity really cried for and lamented and expressed their displeasure, even on the streets. Rigidi Shagwa was at the forefront of even organizing goons to go and kill fellow Kenyans. People had to shed blood. And he said that Raila Molodinga was only planning to destroy people's property. I remember him saying that in Central, they were, they, they were going to vote 100% for it. So for now, coming to tell us that uh, the president is committed to looking into ways in which we can reduce the, 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 the cost of living, I think he's dishonest and is lying to us because he's the number one, the one of the, 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 he leads the most arrogant politicians. He's never apologetic because according to him, he did not see the sense, he did not see the, 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 the importance of listening to the opposition because the bill now is going to affect all of us, including those who are celebrating with him. But then, when he says that the president, I'm just trying to look back, the president remains committed to finding lasting and sustainable solutions to the economic challenges that face our nation, I think this, again, is a dishonesty. Why? There was a time the president was called upon to sit down with the stakeholders to discuss what is happening now. Many Kenyans went in what is the, in the constitution was now called public participation. And I can assure that each and every Kenyan who went there, 99.99% said they were not ready for the finance bill. But William Ruto ignored all of them. And I remember he even coerced the members of parliament and who'd winked the others with some, some, some the speaker himself, even hid facts about the voting time. And others were sent to uh, outside the countries, mostly the, the Zimio members of parliament, and they didn't vote. 
just the other day the Catholic Bishop Anthony Muheria told William Ruto that we need to sit down with all the stakeholders because just passing a bill because you are in the government you know is not allowed because they have always ch just thumped saying that since they were declared the winners of the 2022 election every other person should shut up so that they deal with the economy and when you, you you look at the way they deal with the economy dealing with an economy that is already ailing really does not call for increase increasing prices of the of petroleum products it does not call for removing removal of the subsidies it does not call for you know trying to force people to pay more taxes it's not allowed and one thing that you know i will not mention to say because the epicenter of, of our problems is somewhere in the us the the, the imf have uh, has given us conditions that we have to follow and this is why when we listen to regedi geshagwa he's being dishonest if they are serious about reducing the cost of living then the, 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 this case is still in court because we don't want to be doing let us be very pragmatic about this let them go and remove the the, the 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 appeal that they have in court or let them because the okia mutata is against uh, has accused the attorney general and other people there let them talk to the attorney general to go to court and say that we have withdrawn so that okia mutata carries his day but coming here to apologize to us is unacceptable it is just something to soothe those who are to suit the, 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 those who are crying so that uh, we can have some moments but it is not something that will solve the problem apology will not solve the problem if they are really serious there's something that they can do there is no law this this thing is already it's an act because the president assented to it let the president just say that i've withdrawn my signature so that it can be taken to to to, to parliament and uh, we review it and this is why i agree with the sifuna that uh, our deputy president is playing with us because he's not honest.